my colleagues. My name is Possible, and I will be your teacher for today. In our previous lecture, we ended with the individual demand curves. Individual demand curves. We said that we have two types of demand. We have individual demand, whereby it talks about what only one consumer or customer will be consuming. And then we said that we have another type of demand, which is market demand. The market demand is for a group of consumers. How it makes sense? So the market demand is the aggregate of what consumers, two or more consumers, will be consuming. How it makes sense? For simplicity's sake, today we are going to look at only two consumers. Only two consumers. If you understand that one, it means that if you are being given three or more, you'll be able to solve that one. How it makes sense? So market demand, if you talk about market demand, we are talking about the aggregate of what two or more consumers will consume. Or the aggregate of two or more um, demand of consumers. Or two or more consumers demand. I hope it makes sense. Whatever the case might be, we are saying that if consumer A is consuming this and consumer B is also consuming this, and you put the two together or the three together, we get what is called market demand. Market, because when you go to market, it is not only one person who is there. It's a group of people who are there. I hope it makes sense. So today we are going to start from the market demand shadow. Market demand shadow. If you look at this table, as for the price, it is the same thing. Price of tin tomato. If coffee goes to a market in order to buy tin tomato in, and the price is 10 Ghana cities, it is 10 Ghana cities for coffee and it is 10 Ghana cities for armor. I hope it makes sense. So we are saying that the market shadow, the market shadow, here the price is 10 Ghana cities and the price is 10 Ghana cities for all, all the consumers. I hope it makes sense. But for 10 Ghana cities, all the consumers, they are consuming zero, right? Consumer one is consuming zero, and consumer two is also consuming zero, right? But when the price comes down to eight Ghana cities, consumer one is consuming 80 units, and consumer two is consuming 120. When the price comes down to six Ghana cities, consumer one is consuming 120 units, and consumer two is consuming 180 units. When the price also comes down to four Ghana cities, consumer one, two hundred, consumer two, three hundred. And when the price is nil, consumer one, four hundred units, and consumer two, six hundred units. Now we want to calculate the market demand. Market demand in the table form. What is the shadow? So we are going to get market demand. We are saying that it is the aggregate. The aggregate, the summation of all the demand, or the summation of the individual demand. So zero plus zero will give us zero. Eighty plus one twenty will give us two hundred. Pick up your calculator and punch it. If it is wrong, put the right one there. I hope it makes sense. Eighty plus one twenty is two hundred, and then one twenty plus one eighty will give us what? Will give us three hundred. 200 plus 300 will give us 500. And then 400 plus 600 will give us 1,000. So this place is what is called market demand. Market demand. So that is how it is. This is how we derive our market demand. I hope it makes sense. Using the shadow. Now let us use the curve. We are using the curve. Now the curve for consumer one is 400 here. That's a 400. And then the highest price is 10 Ghana cities. 400 and then 10 Ghana cities. I hope it makes sense. We are sketching. We are sketching. So it's 400 and 10 Ghana cities. Consumer two or customer two is 600. We are sketching 600. And then the maximum price is 10 Ghana cities. 
is 10 Ghana cities. I hope it makes sense. If you put the two together, the price is going to be 10 Ghana cities. Because the price is the same thing for all of them. So 10 Ghana cities. But the units, we have 400 here, we have 600 here. When you put them together, you're going to get 1,000. So you're going to get 1,000 units. So 10 Ghana cities, 1,000 units. I hope it makes sense. So that is that for the market demand curve. So now we have seen the market demand shadow and we have seen the market demand curve. We are going to look at the market demand function, which is very, very crucial. Similar question dropped in the year 2016. University of Cape Coast past question. University of Cape Coast, the year 2016. 2016, similar question dropped. How it makes sense? University of Cape Coast, their past question, 2016, it dropped. Now look at it carefully. Sometimes you can get market, you can get individual demand X to be equal to A minus BP X. And then you get another one. Now we are seeing that it is own price, own price. So let me try to ignore this ones. How it makes sense? Nice one. So here is D equal to minus BP. I'm using this one and then when I'm done, I will use figures. Right. So let us assume that this is consumer one and this one is consumer two. If we want market demand, market if we want market demand, market demand, this one plus this one will give us 2A. This one plus this one will give us 2A. This one plus this one will give us minus 2BP. Equation 3, which is the market demand. So what I'm trying to communicate to you is that if you want to get the market demand function, the market demand function, add the two equations. How it makes sense? As for here, this one you bring it here. You change it and make it what market demand. But this one and this one you put them together. This one and this one you put them together. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So that is how it is. Now let us try to use figures. Because now, whatsoever we are doing, I want you to feel it. I want you to feel everything. I hope it makes sense. So we are trying to use figures, numbers, so that you understand it very well. So let us assume that quantity demand, quantity demand, quantity demand is equal to 3 minus um, 4p. Or oh, 3 minus 4p, right? 4p. And then we have quantity demand here 10 minus 2p. This one is consumer 1, this one is consumer 2. I hope it makes sense. Now, whenever you get a question like this, before you be able to do calculations, First, find the market demand. Please listen to me carefully. You can't use two demand functions to do your calculations. If you want to do it and do it well, first find the market demand. And when you get the market demand, you use the market demand. You use the market demand to do your further computation. I hope it makes sense. So before you can do computation, first find the market demand. And after getting the market demand, then you use the market demand to do your computation. So here will give us QDM. This one and this one will give us 13. I hope it makes sense. This one plus this one will give us 13. And then this one plus this one, because it is minus, because it is minus, negative 2P plus negative 4P will give us negative 60. Negative 60. So this is the equation 3, which is the market demand. So this is what we are going to use. 
again the supply function. I hope it makes sense. Or this is what we are going to use to do our computation. Please listen to me carefully. I hope it makes sense. So this is what is called market demand function. I hope it makes sense. So in our next lecture, we are going to look at how to do calculations on this one in order to get coordinates. In order to use the coordinates also to plot the demand curve. I hope it makes sense. So in our next lecture, we are going to focus on that aspect. We are going to do further computation on individual function, demand function. And then when we do further computation on the individual demand function, we use the, the final answers to plot our demand curve. And then we also look at how to use um, demand, market demand, market demand, how to work on market demand in order to get some solution or some answers in order to use them to plot our demand curve. I hope it makes sense. So our next lecture, we are going to do further computations. So please stay alive with us. Please make sure to get a copy of possible series, possible principles of microeconomics, possible principles of microeconomics. Because whatsoever you are doing, you will be needing some information from that book. How to make sense? Possible principles of microeconomics, and then possible um, Comstock's book. How to make sense? God bless you. Watch out for our next lecture. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.